we will code Slate Aspire from scratch. You've heard right. This is the series where you will learn how to architect a solo card game and build it with clean sustainable code that is easily expandable. What else you want to hear? I mean, let's go! This is the first episode of the series. In this episode we will set up our project and we will also create the card prefab. I will try to upload a new episode twice a week so that you don't have to wait too much. Before we start with the setup, let's have a look on what we will build in the series. If the series is successful and you like it, I will of course expand the series and cover more topics in the future. But here is the overview for our base game. So we will implement our curved hand with cards. It will be possible to draw and discard cards and also to hover them and to drag them. Our cards will have effects and will be modular. We will also have a targeting system so that cards can either choose their targets themselves or they start a targeting process with a target arrow so that you can choose the target. To have something that we can target, we will also implement enemies that will attack you at the end of the turn. And of course we also will have mana, simple FX and animations, a hero and also a perk system. This will be a great solid foundation for your Slay the Spire type game. Everything we build is clean and easily extensible. In Unity I have created a new 3D project. You can use 2D or 3D and almost all of the code works for both, but to make it a bit more flexible I will go with the 3D project. Then we will set up our folders. We will have a few more later, but for now those are enough. We will also create a structure and a scene. I like to divide my scene into setup, views, systems and UI. I also have prepared a few assets. You can find them in the description, but you can also use your own if you want. We have to make sure that they all are imported as sprites and have the sprite mode set to singer. Then we can start to set up the scene. For now we just have the background. Let's drag it into our scene. For this type of game I prefer an orthographic camera, so let's change that. 5.4 should work well for the size. And then let's scale the background to 50% and move the camera a bit. Great. Next, let's import a few packages. We need the 2D package because it's a 3D project and it's not pre-installed. And I also use DoTween to add some animations. Everything we do here is possible with the free version, so download the free version of it. It's very powerful and one of my favorite plugins. Next, inside the views, we can create the card view. I like to call all my non-UI game objects that represent something in the game world views. It will have a child, wrapper, and inside the wrapper we will have a sprite renderer that will be our card background. Let's set the order to minus one so that it is in the background. Oh, and let's change the order of the background to minus 99 so that it always is in the back. Inside the wrapper, we also need a few text components. Let's import Text Mesh Pro. Then let's style the text a bit and position it inside the card. We need the text for mana the title and the description. This looks good. 
We also want to have a sprite renderer for the image of the card. Let's insert the fireball to see how it looks, but then let's remove it initially. Inside the scripts folder, we will have a views folder. Inside of it, all of our view scripts will be. Create a card view script and call it card view because we will later also have a card script and a card data script. This way, we have separate scripts for the data, the logic and the view. Add the script to the card view game object. Then also add a sorting group and a box collider. We use a 3D collider here because it's more flexible if you want to make the cards in 3D. Set the size of the collider. You can set the size of Z to 0.01. In the card view script, let's delete the start and update and let's add a few variables so that we can set our texts inside our code later. We also add a reference to the sprite renderer and to the wrapper. Back in Unity, set the references in the inspector. And drag the object into the prefabs folder so that we have a card prefab. Great. Now we have our card. In the next video we will create our curved hand out of those cards. Make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.